what microphone or what to use for each situation. On a typical video shoot, both a shotgun microphone on a boom pole and a lavalier are used. It happens like usually also like in um, all the interviews or corporate videos, that's the case when you have like enough time like to set things, then just record both and you can decide in post-production which one sound best. The boom uh, with a shotgun microphone, it's also very useful when interviewing lots of different people in short time. For example, the camera is here in an event and you just need like, okay, like make the same question, for example, to 10 different people that are walking there. So of course, it's easier just like to get each person in front of the camera and just you hold your boom and they say what they have to say and then just like leave and next and so it's, uh, yeah you wouldn't have the time and also it's not necessary to go and wire every person so it goes it works good like this the boom has definitely the best sound when it's close to the source so like it will mostly sound more like better than a lavalier if it if if has like a good distance like right above the frame like here with me also, like I have, I don't have a boom microphone, but I have my microphone also here, like right on the top <laughs> of my head. So if you are close enough, then you're going to have uh, the best sound. It's very often used on a C stand for longer interviews. That is also like a, yeah, like a tripod, but especially what like with something that looks like this, that can hold the boom also. Um, it's um, better when there's only one person in front of the camera or if you have more than one person when you have scripted text so that you know when each person is going to talk so that you can like also like go with your boom for each of the persons. When you use the boom, you are sure you won't have any static sound or fabric or rustle like that the lavaliers could give you. And very important, you don't need to put your hands on the talent. <laughs> That's also like a very good reason like to use boom over lavalier in many situations. Maybe many people like from your interviews don't care if you have to put a lavalier on them, but many others maybe don't like a person like coming too close. So with the boom, you know that you won't have like this issue. What are the contrasts in these situations? You can have shadows, especially if the light is coming from above. You're going to may like most likely show uh, throw shadows either with your microphone or with your boom pole like so that uh, you have to avoid being bulky like if you are for example in a report or a documentary and you are like following somebody and then you have like a long boom pole and suddenly the person is going in a very like narrow corridor and you still have to like run and then comes the door and then you have to go down and up again and uh, it's complicated when you have like a boom there like to to be like so fast to move so in those cases of course like a lavalier is way more practical to go with and uh, yeah the arms of the boom operator also get tired after a while <laughs> if you're all the time just like this then there's a moment when you are tired <coughs> lavalier microphones are almost the only option for very wide shots when there's no chance to hold a boom pole because it would be seen on the frame. So you still want to have good audio, go with the lavaliers. They are also like great option for educational contents, news discussion panels, report videos with a main presenter and all these adventures that I just told you. In our cases for educational videos, they are also like very good because the people that is in the person that is in front of the camera explaining something, then uh, he or she can move freely also and uh, like move around the, not the room, but like <laughs> the the space that is in front of the camera and that like can act more free. And if the environment has also like controlled noise, then it's also like a great option to go. Some contrast here is like they might have radio interference, sometimes drop offs, like small interruptions of the, the sound not coming. And if you are using like the uh, lavaliers with um, like the wireless systems with batteries, double A batteries, then they also like run out. Both are good options. It all also depends like on the situation, the time and the environment that you have there. 
some words to podcast. That's also like something that we are doing more nowadays. There's no the number one microphone to go to for a podcast. It all depends on your situation. Like what kind of hardware do you have? Like if you already have like an audio interface or a small mixer that you can plug into your computer, then for you, it's easy to decide, okay, I will go for microphones with XLR uh, input and you will have like for sure also like a very good quality audio there. But if you don't have any equipment and don't know much about audio, there are also like many good USB microphones out there that not all of them are good, but there are some good uh, that you can just like directly plug in and use. It's just like plug and use. And they are definitely like gonna improve the quality of the sound in your podcast if you want to go with them. Now, dynamic or condenser microphones. It depends on how noisy your surroundings are and how you want your voice to sound. As I mentioned before, like the condenser microphones are very, very sensitive. So they really like listen to everything around. So if you live, if you're going to record your podcast at your home and you live in the middle of a very noisy, crowded neighborhood next to the airport and train station and I don't know what, then maybe you don't want to use a condenser microphone that it's going to capture all this. Maybe you go with a dynamic microphone that is also like more directional and more like not so sensitive to all these external sounds and, and it's going to be more focused on your voice that it's exactly directly like in front of you pointing to your mouth so but if you have like a good space um, for example tonight I'm here uh, using like a large diaphragm microphone condenser microphone here but I'm also like in a room that it's dry and um yeah, where there are like no noises around. So it sounds good, I think, I hope. <laughs> the room you choose to record the podcast is as important as the microphone. So even if you buy the most expensive microphone out there that sounds the best, if you want to record podcast in the bathroom, it's going to sound very bad. So it's very important that you also like take into consideration to Try to adequate a little bit the room where you are going to do the recording. Like, as I mentioned before, like find all kind of soft stuff that can help like um, to make it more dry. Yeah, when there is like just floor and ceiling and walls and nothing else, it's more likely to not sound good. So also like uh, sometimes people have like these walking closets uh, when they have like, I don't know, bigger apartments. So those spaces are also like um, more dry than the kitchen, for example. So or that the living room, many people like record podcasts on a living room. So if you have like a very echoey um, reverberant room, that it's also going to influence how it sounds. How many people are you going to record simultaneously? And are they all in the same room? If they are all in the same room, it would be ideal if every person has the same kind of microphone so that they all sound like as similar as possible. Of course, each one with their own uh, like um, voice, tone and everything, but still same quality. For example, uh, for a podcast that we recorded last year, we also used like headsets for everybody. We had the same uh, reference from the headsets and everybody was like also free to move, sorry. And uh, it worked out really good. You can also like work, as I said, with dynamic microphones here. Each person can have it like in front of them with a little tripod for the table. That, and it can definitely also work very good. Of course, think about it. If you are recording more people simultaneously, then you won't be able, I think, to work with USB microphones because the program will all, only choose one, I think. I don't know if they have like internal mixers. I don't think I haven't worked that much uh, with podcasts, like specialized uh, recording podcast programs, I have to say. But I definitely think that if you are going to work uh, with a more than one microphone at a time, then you will need an audio interface with more inputs or a mixer. If they are in the same room, you can also like maybe choose a bi-directional, bi-directional, <laughs> um, 
microphone, this polar pattern that can like record from the front and from the back. So if one person is sitting in front of the other one with one microphone, you would also already like have these two people covered. So that can also work. But yeah, as I said, it all depends. If each person is on their own home, then like the room circumstances that I mentioned before, they are going to influence the recording of each person. So that's it. You need to be ready for any and all situations. You never know what's going to come to you at the end, <laughs> but uh, you now have all the tools to go there. References, as I mentioned, Neumann, Isotope, Sound Devices, Audio Technica, Waves, Sound Girls, they are all like really uh, expert producing, manufacturing microphones and plugins and everything for professional audio world. So they know what they're talking about. And uh, some YouTube channels that I like to follow, it's like Feemaker IQ, Curtis Jet Audio and DSLR Video Shooter. They are like also like trying hands on on the recorders that come out, microphones that come out and like different setups and comparing one brand with the other one. And so it helps a lot. And when you want, when you are thinking, for example, about buying a recorder, so but you don't know which one is best or with, with this budget, what can you buy and that kind of stuff, it definitely helps a lot. And they are like they are very clear and they explain very good. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you learned some new things today or you refreshed some other things that you already knew. And um, yeah, thank you for listening and for being interested in good audio. <laughs>